a healing song. I want to welcome all of you uh, from different countries and different parts of the nation, those of you who are online live with us and those who are listening to the recording. We've just begun the recording. We've just played Richard Smallwood and Vision. Uh, we're not permitted to play that and record it, so we play it beforehand. But we're going to do something different today, starting uh, today, add a new feature to the online church and help make it more personal to you and your loved ones. Uh, we're going to uh, call the altar call. We're going to have the altar call in a few minutes. And then after the altar call, we shall have the, the um, prayer for the service, for the rest of the service. <clears throat> then we're going to have uh, Mrs. Jackie Fisher, who's going to uh, read our scripture. She's going to be reading from Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 14 through 20. And then you're going to hear a message by your servant. And the message will be entitled, If My People. If My People. It's going to be a powerful message. It'll be, it'll be a life-changing message. So we thank you all for joining in and tuning in and for fellowshipping and worshiping with us at the online church. Praise God. I heard a man on CBN today. A uh, well-known pastor saying, because of the demography and the, the, the movements of people and the things happening in nations in the world, it's impossible to send missionaries and preachers to every nation of the world. Some nations won't let people in. But thank God for satellite ministries. And I add to that, thank God for the online church that we can go where people cannot go. And this is part of the church. We're taking the gospel to the nations. We welcome all of our friends in Kenya, in Uganda, all of our friends in Jamaica, all of our friends in European countries. We thank God for you, for our friends all over this nation, as we worship the living God in spirit and in truth. And we give a shout out to all the other online churches out there as you take the word of God, as you take the word of God in to the nations. Don't let anybody hinder you. If God has called you to do an online church, an online Bible study, an online prayer service, uh, you go ahead and do that and trust the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Well, it's altar call time, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to go before the Lord at the altar. And uh, we want you to seriously join us at the altar wherever you are. Uh, even if, if you're in another country and you're listening to this recording, pray as we pray for the people uh, in our, our uh, chat window. And if you're unable to place a name in the chat window uh, before we pray, just right now, just call out the names of people whom you want prayer for. Just call out their names before the Lord, and the Lord <clears throat> will hear your voice. Okay, so praise God. Uh, we're we're going to call out these names. We've got a long list of names, and we're going to be doing this, ladies and gentlemen, on Sunday mornings to take people to the altar and present their situation to the Lord and give it over to Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. The Lord who heals. He's also known as Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides more than enough. He's also known as Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord, our righteousness. He's also known as Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our peace. We call him God. We call him Father. And, and uh, we pray to him. He said, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. And there's no situation that God cannot heal or, or fix. Praise God. Well, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Uh, we're lifting up uh, many people today. Let me get to the top of this, this list. <clears throat> we're praying for Jackie's son, Mark. He's gone to the doctor this week for assessment of his health. We believe that Mark's going to get a great report from his doctor. Praise God. We believe that. We're praying uh, for Paige McDaniel. Paige is the daughter of one of our students at the Paul Begley School of Prophecy. Uh, her red blood count is not where it ought to be. We're praying to God. Uh, 
stabilize her blood and heal her body. We're praying for you, Paige. We're praying for Janie Franklin, Jackie's mother, who has been agonizing with arthritis for a long time. We're believing God for healing for you, Miss Janie. We're praying for Marion Fuqua in Philadelphia. We're praying that there be no more tumors uh, on your brain. We're praying for healing, total healing for Marion. We're praying for Len Henderson, my college classmate. Praying for you, Lenny. You and I, we played baseball together for Howard University. We controlled the outfield. <clears throat> praying for Jerome Burton, a seminary classmate of mine. Uh, uh, praying for Jerome. He's in a hospice. Praying for him. Praying for Jackie Woods in Stone Mountain, uh, Georgia. Praying for you, Jackie. We believe you have victory over that cancer. We believe you. Praying for Rosalind Taylor in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Praying for Johnny Bigsby, my neighbor. I can look right across the pond and I can see his house. Johnny Bigsby wrestling with uh, um, diabetes. We're praying for healing for him. Emma Williams in Lake Villa, uh, Illinois, praying that you win the victory over that arthritis. We're praying for Stacy Baggett, one of the supporters of this ministry, and uh, whose son is one of our students in the Paul Bakley School of Prophecy. Praying for you, Stacy, for you and Bryce and Cliff. Praying for Jackson B. Hughes, one of my fellow Green Berets. He and I, we served as Green Berets together back in the day, back in the 60s. He's in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Praying for Jill Miller, one of my students uh, from a long time ago, one of the first high school students I ever taught. We're praying for Jill Miller in Upper Darby, Pennsylvania. We're praying for Michelle Everard and for baby Jotham in Illinois. We're praying that God is going to bless you all in Waukegan, Illinois, and give you healing. Praying for Pastor Paul Begley and his precious wife, Heidi. Praying that Paul's hearing will be restored and that, that, that earache and that headache and I ache will be delivered. He'll be delivered from that. We believe God. Praying for Alan Morris, uh, the man who put my air conditioning unit in. Praying for you, Alan, that you get back on your feet. My air conditioning unit went out, man, <laughs> and you're the only one who knows how to fix it. Come on, man, get up off your get up on your feet in the name of Jesus and be healed. Praying for uh, Terry, sister Debbie. Praying for Terry, brother Bill. Praying for Terry's niece, Jolene. Praying for Jolene's son, Anthony. We're praying for them all and for any other names that have been called out. God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. We lift up these names to you, those that were written and those that are being called out to you right now. We come to the altar. We come boldly to the throne of grace in the name of Jesus. First of all, God, we ask that you forgive us of all of our sins. Cleanse us of all iniquity, and we lift up each of these to you, Lord that God, and ask for healing. Give them healing, God. Send signs and wonders and miracles, and we present them to you. We bind every form of sickness. We use the authority that Jesus Christ has given us, and we command healing in the name of Jesus, and we give you the praise, God. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, let the church say amen. Let's hear a shout out from the church right now. Church, say amen. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You are the prayer answering God, and we love you. Hallelujah. Praise God. So that's our first altar call, ladies and gentlemen, at the Back to Basics uh, online church. Our first altar call. We'll be doing this more and more uh as we enter into the prayer of agreement, praying for the sick. There are so many who are sick, many who are afflicted, but God is the healer. And God, we, we acknowledge you as God. You are the healer. And so we present every case to you, and we thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, as, you're, as the healings come, send us the praise report. Send us the praise report so we can announce those praise reports. And so that, you know, as you send in your praise report, you're acknowledging God as the healer, and you're also giving God the glory, and you're also helping to build someone else's faith up. And so we thank God. We praise God. 
Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, for the last three w- weeks I've been preaching about hell, about hell. Last week we preached about the man who went to hell and came back to tell. I preached about the man who went to hell and came back to tell. Well, would you believe that I found on uh, on the online news to, uh, about three days ago, there was a woman around Chicago or somewhere. She died. She was dead for 27 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. The doctor said she was dead for 27 minutes. And she said, uh, and when she came back, she came back. The first thing she said was, give me some paper and a pen. Give me some paper and a pen. I want to write and, and describe what I've just seen. God let her get a glimpse of heaven, ladies and gentlemen. Hallelujah. So I know these preaching messages we're doing are right on time, right in line with the Holy Ghost uh, timeline. This lady went to heaven. She died. She did not go to hell. She was dead for 27 minutes, and the Lord let her get a glimpse of heaven. Then he sent her back, and she took pen in hand and began writing and describing. It's all, it, it's all, it was on uh, the news this week, and uh, praise God. So, ladies and gentlemen, what we preach is real. What we preach is real. We preach Christ Jesus crucified. Well, born of a virgin Mary, uh, crucified on the cross, buried in a tomb, dead for three days, uh, raised up from the dead uh, by his own power, and he ascended into heaven where he sits at the right hand of the throne of God, and right now he's making intercession for us. He's praying for the sick. He's praying for us praying for your nation, praying for my nation. He's praying for us. What a mighty God we serve. So we just want to welcome you to the online church. And uh, send me an email uh, what you think about adding the uh, altar call. And so tell people, tell people, hey, come on and listen to this message. We're going to do an altar call. We're going to pray for you and your family. And those who watch this on YouTube and uh, on our website, uh, know that we're praying. We're calling out the names of your loved ones. God is concerned about your loved ones. He's concerned about you. And so we're calling out your name, not for form or fashion, but that God will touch them and meet every need. And so we thank you, Father, and we bless you, and we honor you. Praise God. Well, we're going to ask our friend Ryan Trugler from Marysville, Pennsylvania, You say, well, where in the world is Marysville, Pennsylvania? And I'll say, I don't know. It's up near Harrisburg somewhere. But uh, I'll see Ryan when we get up to Pennsylvania next month. Praise God. Ryan's going to come and lead us in prayer. Uh, Morning, Pastor. Yeah, I'm running like five minutes from Harrisburg. And I will see, yes, I will see, I will see you at the end of, end of July when we go graduate, if you're going over there. At the yes, we'll see you there at the graduation. Right. Yes, sir. Okay. Heavenly Father, we come to you humbly today. Uh, we want to uh, thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for all of our sins. And we want to thank you for defeating death and defeating the, and the tomb and arising and ascending into heaven and showing us what you, what you can do showing us the miracles, showing us the healing. And Lord, speaking of healing, we want you to heal all these people that the pastor had just read off and everybody that, that's sick, that just needs healed, the cancer, the diabetes, the, the, the restoration of the people's spirits and minds and hearts. And we also want to uh, pray for the protection and blessing of Pastor Paul and his, and his, his wife, uh, Heidi. We also want to uh, bless uh, Pastor Carter and his family and giving us and giving uh, the knowledge and wisdom to teach us your word again today, and just just reach us, just grab us by the hand, Lord, and just take us where you want us to be, Lord. And your mighty in the name of Jesus, precious name, Amen. Amen, Amen. Thank you, Ryan. We appreciate that prayer. We appreciate your love and your de- devotion and dedication to the Lord. We thank you that you are our brother in Christ, and thank you for your. Precious wife, Tara, and daughter, Jenna, and may God continue to bless you all, too. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're uh, 
getting closer to our message for the day. We've got a good message. And um, we we also, we like, like to honor uh, our reader of our word. You know, the reading of the word is so important, so very important. We have one who reads well, who reads uh, 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 with emphasis, who reads uh, a very professionally, and, uh, the, and, and, and she reads in her own style. And that's uh, our, our, our prayer warrior and, 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 and co-worker in Christ, Jackie Fisher, from out there in, I think it's Dry Ridge, Kentucky, somewhere out there, uh, out there on the mountainside in Kentucky. Jackie Fisher is going to read Second uh, Chronicles chapter 7, verses 14 through 20. Come on, Jackie. Uh, well, good morning, Pastor Carter, and good morning, good morning, church. Yes, we'll be reading Second Chronicles 7, 14 through 20, and it's entitled, If My People. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open, and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have, have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. And as for thee, if thou wilt walk before me, as David thy father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shalt observe my statutes and my judgments. Then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom, according as I have covenanted with David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. But if ye turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them. Then will I pluck them up by the roots of my land, which I have given them, and this house, which I have sanctified for my name, will I cast out of my sight, and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. Second Chronicles seven fourteen through 20. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jackie, for reading the scriptures. And we appreciate that reading. And what a powerful word. What a powerful word. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. And as as you were reading the scripture, the Lord uh, kept putting Russell in my mind, Russell in my mind. So you, your husband, Russell, tell him to get ready for a blessing. He's getting a blessing from the Lord. I believe he's getting a healing from the Lord. I don't know what it is, but I believe Russell is getting a healing from the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, when we're faithful to God, God not only blesses us, but he blesses our loved ones. God is not a man that he should lie. So be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as we know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. And if Russell's living, uh, listening, he's living. If Russell's listening, uh, I pray that you'll receive that healing, Russell, and whatever other blessings God has for you. Ladies and gentlemen, God is real. God is real. He's real at the online church. He's real at the brick and mortar church. We need one another. Praise God. Many of you are getting blessed on the online church. You can go back to the brick and mortar church and help out with, with their programs as they seek the Lord for greater growth in Christ. Hallelujah. I'm excited. I'm beginning to see many of our uh, uh, members of this church online. Some are doing selfies. Some are doing videos. Some are doing teachings online. Praise God. Pray, hey, I ain't mad. No, you keep on doing what God has called you to do. This thing is not being done in a corner. I'm, praise God. I wrote a book just a few months ago entitled The Online Church and the Great Commission. 
And I'm seeing more and more and more pastors starting online churches, reaching out to the people. Hey, why don't you have an online Bible study instead of having your members driving 20, 30 miles in the dark on, over rugged roads and, 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 and cluttered highways to get to your Bible study? Why don't you just tell them, stay home. Let's study online. Let's study. And the anointing is there, ladies and gentlemen. God's already healed some people today. God has healed some people today online. Ladies and gentlemen, we can pray for them online, and God will heal. And this way they don't have to get out on the highways and drive 20 or 30 miles when they're tired, when they're stressed, when the traffic is, 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 is outrageously atrocious. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, let's use what God is giving unto us. Praise God. Thank you, Ryan, for the prayer. Ryan, you're a prayer warrior. Ryan is one of our intercessors. And thank you, Jackie, for reading the scripture. And now we're going to turn our attention uh, for, for about maybe 15 minutes uh, to, the, to a message that we believe will bless you and set you free. We believe this. We believe this. Uh, it, it, it's going to be tight, but it's going to be right. Uh, as you know, all of my messages are tight and, and right because uh, I believe they come from the Lord. And, and God is looking for men and women who would not be afraid to preach. He's looking for men and women who are not compromised. He's looking for men and women who will not be influenced by politics. He's looking for men and women who will not be persuaded by money or favor. And he's looking for men and women who will not be afraid to offend people. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not afraid to offend anybody. If God says it in his word, then the word has preeminence over everything else. If, if the word of God offends you, then it means you need to repent. You need to repent. Don't get mad at the preacher. Don't throw bricks at the mailman. Uh, the same mailman who brings you bad news brings you your so Social Security check. So don't be throwing bricks at the mailman or the messenger. Well, praise God. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share your word with the people. We thank you for the scripture that Jackie just read from 2 Chronicles 7, 14 to 20, where you gave King Solomon instructions about greatness, instructions about greatness. And you, you, you told him, you will be great. You will be great. Your name will be great. Uh, your father's name, David, will be great. There will always be a, a man on the throne of Israel if you follow my instructions. And so my subject today is entitled, If My People. If My People. If is a word of supposition. It means you've got to do something in order for something to follow. If, it's a very powerful word. If my people... The scripture says in the 14th verse, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. Ladies and gentlemen, God's people are key to the success of nations. God has chosen people to make nations successful. God has chosen the church. Ladies and gentlemen, as you go through this message with me today, we will realize that God is not making this promise to the United States of America or to the Soviet Union or to Afghanistan or to China or to North Korea or Jamaica or Kenya, God is not making this promise to people saying, I'll make you all great if you do this, if you do this. He's saying, if my people, which are called by my name, ladies and gentlemen, the, the onus, the group that God has chosen in order for him to fulfill his promises, please listen to this. We hear a lot about make America great again. And God 
can make America great. My contention is America has never been great. We have never been a great nation. And I'm going to go, I will, quali I will qualify and quantify that in a moment. We hear a lot. We see these baseball caps. We have a president saying, make America great again. And we got a whole lot of folks dressed in red and white in all these meetings. Yeah, yeah, waving flags. Make America great again. And many of these folks hate one another. They, 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 they're worshiping a man who is, has told over 80,000 lies in just two years of being president, three years of being president. He's told over 80,000 lies. They have made a god out of him. They idolize him. And the sad thing is the church, ladies and gentlemen, the church in America, the so-called church in America, has lifted up this man to, to, uh, to make him a god. Anything he says and does is all right with the church. And, and God's, got, God's got something contrary to say about that. And, and God's going to God's gonna deal with this situation. And, and, and I'm not bashing the president, but I'm bashing the church. Because the church has allowed themselves to be deceived. we got so many pastors who are afraid to offend others. We've got so many pastors. They don't want to lose those federal funds. They don't want to lose those tithes and offerings. They don't want to offend people. And so they're, they are they're actually, ladies and gentlemen, they're on CNN. I see them every day. They're all over this nation. They're lifting up a liar. Ladies and gentlemen, how can you be a pastor a true man or a woman of God, and support a lie. It does not jive with Christianity. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. But yet we've got in this nation alone, ladies and gentlemen, we've got in this nation a division in the church. We've got uh, the church now are calling themselves Republicans, and they're calling the Republicans Christians. And ladies and gentlemen, open your eyes. Republicans are not Christians. There are some Republican Christians, but the Republican Party is not Christianity. Ladies and gentlemen, wake up and smell the coffee. The Republican Party is just as atrocious as the Democratic Party. You've got... You've got uh, 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 people in the Republican Party just as ungodly as you'd have in the Democratic Party, and yet the church has been deceived into thinking and claiming the Republican Party as the, uh, as the party of the church. Ladies and gentlemen, politics stinks. Politics stinks. Yes, we've got to be a part of a political system, but politics stinks. Ladies and gentlemen, please be cautious. Be careful about idolizing a president idolizing the Speaker of the House, idolizing your congressman, idolizing your governor, uh, idolizing these candidates. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got people in America who are idolizing one man from a Midwestern state, and he's married to a man. He's running for president, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a dude married to another dude, and he's running for president, and, he, and he's got uh, gathering a lot of support. Ladies and gentlemen, and, and he's gathering a lot of the church support. Ladies and gentlemen, the church needs to wake up. And how can you support anybody who's a liar, anybody who's a whoremonger, anyone who's a, a pedophile, pedophile, anyone who's a cheat, anyone who's robbed people, anyone who looks down on, anyone who's a racist, one who, who is full of hatred? How can you, church? How can you, church? Answer me, somebody. How can you support somebody? Who is like this? How can you support? And then on the flip side, if you're a Democrat, how can you support somebody who is for abortion? Ladies and gentlemen, what America has to give an account, America has to give an account for the 50 million babies that have been killed in this nation alone. America has to give an account, and the church has to give an account because the church is divided on this issue of abortion. Ladies and gentlemen, abortion means killing a life that's in the womb, killing, snuffing out a live person who's in somebody's belly, snuffing them out, and yet the church supports abortion. I know I'm out here in deep water, but I just don't care what you think. If I offend you, so be it. Go and find you some punk preacher and follow him. 
because I'm going to preach the word of God. You go find you some little sissy, some little sissy, cute looking, cute acting preacher and follow him who's not going to offend you. But I'm going to preach the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, God said in his word, if my people which are called by my name, and that word is going out to the church, it's not going out to church members because there are a whole lot of people who attend church. Ladies and gentlemen, our president attends church. And, 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 and after he comes out of church, he has a press conference and he starts telling lies again. It does not jive, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, the Speaker of the House attends church. The Speaker of the House comes out of church and, and starts lying again. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, many of our governors, many of our candidates for president attend church. Many go to try to get your vote. But attending church does not mean you're God's people. You cannot be a person of God if you attend church. You must be born again. You must be born by the Spirit of God into the church. The real members of the church, the real people of God, are those who have been born again by the Spirit of God. You must be born again. You cannot join the church. You cannot join the kingdom of God. You must be born into it by the Holy Spirit. Why are people struggling with that? It's all over the scripture, John 3, 16. It's all over the scripture, John 3, 3. Uh, uh, Romans 10, uh, 9 and 10 tell us how to get born again, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Well, the, the challenge is, Make America great again. My contention is you can't make anything great again that has never been great. Well, you're talking about America. Yes, I am. I got a flag. My flag is out over my driveway, hanging from a tree over my driveway. I'm, I'm, I'm a law-abiding citizen. I'm a former Green Beret. I gave uh, service to my nation, and I salute the flag. I do not take a knee when the when the national anthem is being played. I stand up and, and salute. I act like I know, and 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 uh, that's just the way I roll. But I do not agree that we can make America great again. Why? Well, I'm going to give you a few reasons why. Here's one reason why America has never been great. What was great about slavery? What was great about taking four million people out of Africa, selling them, and, and, and using them for cheap labor? And, and many people today are wealthy. Their families are wealthy because cheap labor, slave labor, built their industries, built their wealth. And, and, and what's great about slavery? Now, now, to listen to somebody like Mitch, Mitch McConnell, Mitch McConnell said, and this is the height of stupidity, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, you're talking about one of the all-time stupid things ever said in this nation. Mitch, Mitch O'Connell, Mitch McConnell, Mitch McConnell said, he said, America made up for slavery when they elected Barack Obama president. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, please, 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 I'm about to regurgitate, please. He said, America made up for slavery. America made it for all those 4 million people they stole from Africa. Uh, beat, beat them. Many were, uh, were castrated. They even, they're even, there's documentation how slave owners would cut open a, a pregnant woman's belly and, and, and take the baby out and let the mother die and then feed that new baby to the alligators as alligator bait to capture alligators. Ladies and gentlemen, America has a long way to go to do repentance for uh, slavery. And all it takes is just to repent. But you got people, and you got people in America, you got people in high office who still think that there are certain people better than other people. And we're witnessing this today. Another thing, what was great about the planned and systematic slaughter of millions of Native Americans, the organized systematic plan slaughter of the Indians, the Native Americans. What was great about that? When, America cannot be great again because America was never great. America did not handle the Indian problem 
correctly. What is great about racism, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, a war was fought, a civil war was fought. Uh, hundreds of thousands of men were killed on both sides of the, of the, of the battlefield, and yet uh, their great-great-grandchildren still hate one another and still hate uh, people of other races. So what's great about this? What's great about hatred? As I continue, what's so great about the slaughter of 50 million babies, we, we mentioned that, through abortion? What is great about the abusive slaughter of millions of people in foreign lands uh, because of so-called U.S. intervention or U.S. military action or the fact that we've sold weapons of destruction, we've sold weapons of mass destruction to other nations? What is great about leading the world in the denial of traditional marriage, ladies and gentlemen, and the embracing of same-sex marriage. America is the world leader, ladies and gentlemen, in same-sex marriage and the breakdown and the denial of traditional marriage. America's taking the lead and the rest of the world is following America's lead. What's great about that? I mean, uh, same-sex marriage is an abomination. When men sleep with men, women sleep with women, and they engage and, and betroth themselves and uh, to one another, that is an abomination against God. God is saying, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, and ladies and gentlemen, in this nation, they will kill you if you're against uh, same-sex marriage. They will destroy you. Because people have gotten far away from the word of God. They've gotten so far removed. They will kill you if you challenge their, their racist attitude. They will kill you if you challenge their position on abortion. They will put you to death, ladies and gentlemen. They will shoot you. They will line you up. They will run over you with their cars. That's how far we've gotten away from God, ladies and gentlemen. So to have someone say, make America great again, no, 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 I'll contraire. I contend, let's make America great. And the only way to make America great, and I have many more on this list, but I don't want to sound like a grumbler. I want to sound like a preacher, okay? I don't want to sound like a grumbler. Uh, I want to preach the word, but... God has given us the solution to greatness. He gave it to Solomon. When Solomon finished building the temple to the Lord, God promised him he would visit that place. He would heal the sick. Solomon even prayed, ladies and gentlemen, that if any people are sick and if they just turn in the direction of this building, Lord, will you heal them? And God promised that he would. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about make America great. Well, God gave Israel the key to greatness, but God also said, as Jackie read, but if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land, which I have given them, and this house, which I have sacked, Sanctify for my name, will I cast out of my sight, and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. And you know what happened to Israel. After God made this great promise to Israel, and this great promise hung on the word if, the supposition, if, if you humble yourselves, if you pray, if you seek my face, if you turn from my wicked ways, and God was speaking to the, his children, to his people, and God is speaking to his people today, the born again, the blood washed, many who have compromised, who have crossed over to the dark side, many who worship every word coming out of this president's mouth, people who worship every word coming out of the speaker of the house's mouth. And, and, and worship every, every word coming out of the, of the liars on the uh, CNN news. Look, some of these anchors, I can name a few, a, a, at least two of these anchors, nationwide news anchors on CNN are men married to men. 
ladies and gentlemen, yet the church worships these people, idolizes them, and will do anything they say. Ladies and gentlemen, many of our heroes are an abomination to the Lord. Many of our political leaders are an abomination to the Lord, and the church does not have the guts or the courage or the love for Jesus to say, hey, no, I will not follow that. I will not support that. But God promises, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, ladies and gentlemen, you and I, we're in a minority. We're in a minority in this country. Eighty percent of Americans do not even go to church. And out of the many people who go to church, how many do you really believe are born again? How many do you believe are born again? You and I are in a minority, but God promises us, and it's in the Scripture, if you and I, if my people, God says, which are called by my name, we're called by the name of Jesus. We've been, been given the keys to the kingdom, the authority to the kingdom of God. We walk in kingdom authority. We walk in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from my, their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal the land. Ladies and gentlemen, their land needs to be healed. A 7.1 and a 7.2 earthquake uh, in the aftermath uh, shook California this week. Earthquakes and, and, and Jeep, Jeep's going to be preaching next week. She'll tell you more about earthquakes and this. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is just the beginning. God will heal the land of earthquakes if we humble ourselves and pray and repent. But yet, so many people are bent on staying in the game, Republicans hating Democrats, Democrats blaming Republicans, Republicans blaming Democrats, and now the church is so pathetic. Pastors and church people pointing the finger just like politicians and taking their eyes off God and falling for Satan's okie doke and walking in condemnation looking down on others, looking down on the poor people at the uh, uh, Mexican border, looking down on people of color, looking down on, on, on uh, even the people of their own race who are less fortunate than they are. Ladies and gentlemen, we need revival in this nation. We need to repent. We need to repent from the White House to my house. Yes, we need to repent, and God will be faithful to his promise. He's not a man that he should lie. He said, he promised, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, you and I, we need to humble ourselves. Humble ourselves. Don't walk in bitterness. Don't walk in anger. Don't walk in jealousy. Don't walk in idolatry. Don't get puffed up. Don't think of yourself more than what you are. Don't look down on your neighbor. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Humble yourself and pray. Pray. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Seek him while he may be found. And, and, and then uh, to repent. To repent and turn from our wicked ways. All the things we're doing are not of God, ladies and gentlemen. From my house to the White House. We need to walk humbly before the Lord. And if we do these things, then God says, I will, number one, I hear from heaven. I will hear from heaven. Number two, I will forgive their sin. Number three, I will heal the land. God will heal the land, ladies and gentlemen, if the church would get right. It, it doesn't take, it won't take, uh, 300 million people or whatever the population is in this nation, it won't take all the people in this nation repenting if the church would just repent. Listen to this. If the church, I'm talking about the born-again believers, the real blood-washed 
people who are in a minority in this nation, if the church would repent, humble ourselves, pray, seek God's face, it does not yet appear what God shall do. Listen to this word. Take the action that you're required to do. Repent of your sins. Confess your sins and walk humbly before God. The word of God says, what does uh, what is required of thee, O man, but to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly before thy God. And then the scripture tells us in uh, Psalm 33, 12, Psalm 33, 12 says, that nation is blessed whose God is the Lord. That nation is great whose God is the Lord. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. I pray that this message has challenged you, has been a blessing to you, and that it will this message will, will will help you to stay on your knees, to stay on knee bone station. Don't walk thinking more highly of yourself than you ought, but let us think soberly, vigilantly, vigilantly and humbly. Let us uh, uh, walk before the Lord and let us pray for this nation. Pray that the nation be saved, not only this nation, but the nations of the world. And we thank God in Jesus' name. Father, we bless you and honor and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. If this message has touched you and you're not saved and you want to be saved, you want to give your life to Jesus, then confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell God you believe he's the Son of God. Tell God you believe that he died for your sins. Ask Jesus to come into your life and be your Savior and Lord, and you will be born again. Then go to a church where they preach the gospel, whether it's a brick-and-mortar church or an online church. I recommend this online church because we know what we believe and what we preach. But, but this is not the only church. Go where the Spirit of God leads you. And get under the authority of an anointed preacher and teacher of the word of God. Most of us, submit yourself to the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Well, bless God. Well, bless God. Oh, we're about to uh, end our recording. And when I end the recording, I want you to stay on for a few minutes. Let's chat and chew a little bit. Um, please visit our website. Visit our website. I want you to visit our website and um, visit our website so that you can see the great things that are happening. Uh, I have on the website, I'm putting this now, back to basics, ministries, inc.com. Visit this website and see the beautiful photos we have of the church construction in in uh, Kenya. They built the new church. It's under roof. In three days, they completed the new the building of the, the uh, outside and the roof. And now uh, we will send them. We had an appeal. They needed five hundred and fifty dollars more. We're sending that to them on Monday, and that's to get the steel doors and the four windows to go into this building. They will probably be worshiping in that church next Sunday, ladies and gentlemen. And you are part of this. Go on, uh, visit our website, uh, lock and load our website on, into your system, and visit. Stay on that website because this website, Back to Basics Ministries Inc. com, will keep you up to date with our Bible study that's starting in September. It's going to be awesome. Uh, the School of Ministry, uh, where we're offering courses at. Uh, half of the price some of you are paying now, uh, we're going to, uh, and, and the things about the new church in Kenya, um, the online church, oh, this, this website is wonderful, and we give God the praise. Remember, you can call me anytime you want to. Send me an email, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com. 